Hi everyone, welcome to Precision Net Systems TSAM webinar series. Today with us, Dr. Francesca Torbelde from the Houston Methodist Hospital, and she's going to talk about biomimetic LMPs for enhanced targeting of inflammatory tissue. And we are going to learn about the challenges. So before we are getting into it, our an overview about our Europe team, we have two RSMs, regional sales managers, Jürgen and Sue. Jürgen is located in Germany and Sue Hush is in the UK. And we are three FAS as field application scientists, Edward from the UK, Martin is from Germany, and I am from France. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Let me share the screen. Um, today, we're going to speak about biomimetic LMPs for enhancing targeting. Uh, thank you for the invitation and to allow me to have this tea time. Actually, here in Houston, it's early morning, so I had my espresso also because I'm Italian by origin. So, um, And the presentation, it doesn't go. Uh, okay, yes little technical issue, but we are good. So I, I'm gonna talk a little bit at the beginning about biological barrier, because what we uh, try to do with the nanomedicine in general is having these little nanoparticles that arrive at the site of the disease and deploy whatever they, uh, they, they, their payload, that can be a molecules, a biomolecules, can be a protein, can be an mRNA, can be a sRNA and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, this cool story is not really real because uh, the, the pathway, the, the journey that this particle has inside the body have a lot of uh, um, steps that has to overcome, barriers that has to overcome. And here are summarized very well in this review uh, in which we can see intravascular barrier, endothelial barrier, extracellular barrier, cellular barriers. And we're going to go a little bit in details about these different barriers and how they work. The first is the intravascular barriers. So it's not just the physical barriers, but it's also a very dense network of uh, vessels. So we can think about a lot, a, a very intricate uh, highway uh, and they don't have a GPS, they don't have a Google map. So they have to arrive at the site uh, to be treated. And uh, a lot of efforts have been done in this, uh, uh, in this field in order to understand how this particle can arrive exactly at the site that has to be treated. And moreover, inside these barriers, there's not just the problem of the GPS to understand where to go, but it's also there are some, let's say, cops that interject these particles and sequester it, and they uh, basically impede this particle to arrive to, the, uh, to their target. And this is the MPS, the mononuclear phagocytic system. Uh, so if you can see here, this is the video that we got for intravital microscope in which we put ourselves in the liver, which is one of the clear organ. You can see that in, in the matter of very uh, fast time, I hope that you can see the video. Uh, let's see if it doesn't trick me too much. Oh, oh, oh. No, sorry. You can see, this is the liver, and you can see in how quick after the injection, the particle get arrive at the side of the liver and they get sequestered. The second barrier is the, um, is the endothelial barrier, is what I was uh, telling you before. So the fact that, that this particle has to travel and has to be allowed to travel, <clears throat> and normally we control this part by size, but they have to circulate as much as possible in, the, in this vessel in order to arrive at the site uh, that uh, we want to treat. And uh, finally, uh, we have the extracellular barriers, and this is a very uh, important, especially for what pertain a uh, particular kind of disease that we want to treat with nanoparticles. Some cancer has a very dense uh, extracellular matrix that is formed, it's, it's called in cancer like solid capsule, but in also in a lot of other uh, treatment, we have a, a, a complete restructure, uh, sorry, in, in, a, in a lot of other disease, there is a complete restructure of the extracellular matrix. Let's think about lung fibrosis, or especially in my field, fibrosis is, is a big deal. And when there is fibrosis, there is a complete remodeling of extracellular matrix that become very dense. 
and so very difficult to penetrate for the particles if the, if we don't take care about this part. Here you can see as, as well that we can uh, check this kind of diffusion in the stroma wind intravital microscope in which you can see at different time point the particles travel in the vessel. The vessel are this uh, green structure and the particles are these red dots. And you can see that the, in the meantime, they can accumulate at the site of the, the, the target and then start to extravasate. This is what uh, we call and then diffuse in the stroma. And finally, we have the cellular barriers. Well. So, uh, the cellular barriers is depending on our target and our payload. There are payload that has to be delivered outside the cell uh, space, and there are many of um, many of our strategies as nanotechnologies that the, the cargo has to be delivered inside the cells and has to be uh, able to escape the uh, endosomal compartment and then function and find their target inside the cells. And we can study as well this kind of mechanism, this kind of tra in internal trafficking. Uh, but of course, we have some uh, issues on resolution, but it's very important to understand all this uh, mechanism in the, in the moment in which you design a, a nano vehicle to deliver any kind of payload. Uh, the, our strategy as a lab uh, that has been uh, um, developed throughout a lot of years is the biomimicry. So all what uh, what is the philosophy is the fact that the nature does think better. And uh, the important thing is that a lot of technology has been developing different kinds of field, taking inspiration of, uh, from the nature. And, from the, and since the nature already developed some strategy to overcome this, uh, like uh, some challenging, we want to study the nature in order to see if we can take inspiration for that and then come out with a smart way to, in this case, overcome these different steps uh, and different uh, barriers that I just described to you. So what uh, we... Uh, end up to uh, understand is that the, in the in our body there are already some somebody or something that uh, is pretty good to overcome these barriers and these are the leukocyte. Uh, first of all, because leukocyte they can travel around that network of vessels that we were talking about. Uh, of course, they cannot interject by MPS because they are themselves part of the MPS. And secondly, they uh, can adhere when they are needed, especially in the site of inflammation, they can uh, adhere to the, um, to the vessel and they can extravasate outside the vessel and diffuse in the stroma. So starting from this observation, we also see that actually leukocyte and macrophage in the specific way, there are some uh, tropism, so some uh, specific target towards inflammation. And so this is, was the principle, the biomimetic principle that we adopt. We say, can we do a nanoparticles that act like a leukocyte and basically retain uh, the properties of this leukocyte, meaning uh, uh, arrive to the site of the inflammation uh, and adhere to the um, to the endothelial vessel and then extravasate and eventually release whatever it, it brings with it. Uh, uh, to, to treat the area. And in 2016, you can see better, let me see if I can put the laser, in 2016 and 2018, we publish uh, these two papers in which we introduce the leucosome. So uh, this kind of uh, particles that, that we summarize in this uh, uh, review over here is we call it like third generation. So if uh, I believe that uh, especially this audience being in the field for a while, they know that at the beginning we had like a first generation particles in which there were bare particles in which we are becoming very good to modulate all the chemical, physical, chemical uh, uh, part of it. Then we decide that we need the targeting for overcome a lot of barriers, as we said before, so to arrive exactly in the place that we want. And then what we call third generation particles is just use part of the cell that already do this thing by themselves, by nature, and exploit their potential, um, 
came out with a sort of uh, synthetic exosome. And uh, we study and we describe this, uh, the, the method of synthesis, which as the beginning was uh, uh, by normal TLE in the natural materials uh, paper. And then we been successful translate this kind of uh, uh, method of fabrication in the uh, um, uh, uh, PNI system. And we describe also in uh, that the part, the protein that we can embed inside these uh, particles that, that arrive directly from the cell source, that in this case were leukocytes, they are oriented in the right way so they can actually work as they work in their uh, source cells. Um, and here you can see that we are particularly focused in some of uh, the uh, important uh, membrane protein of the leukocytes because are those protein that help to adhere to the uh, inflammatory, sorry, inflamed endothelia, uh, which is like LF1 or MAC1. What we uh, show over here in the in vivo model that if we block those receptor, actually leukosome don't, don't maintain uh, the, the tropism that uh, we're doing before. So mostly of the targeting of these nanoparticles is mediated by the uh, uh, membrane protein that uh, come from the um, source cells. And uh, you can see here, if I can do it always, because with, there is always the challenging of the laser, non-laser. So if you can see here, we have a, a liposome, which is, we call it bare particles. So basically it's the same composition of liposome, uh, sorry, lipids, but uh, doesn't have the uh, protein part. And you can see that they, the first thing that they do, they circulate way longer because they don't, get trapped by the MPS and bring it to the liver. So we had a different uh, uh, a, a elongated time of circulation, which allow us to a better, let's say, uh, targeting. And uh, second of all, if we don't have the inflammatory part, it doesn't, it, it doesn't work, basically. It doesn't stick to all those vessels. They are not inflamed. And this is pretty uh, good. And uh, uh, we thought that at the beginning, we say we have something, uh, a nano object that actually can target inflamed endothelia. And you can see here that eventually when, when it targets inflamed endothelia, it stick over there. It's not just a, a case that, that it got trapped over, here, uh, over there, but they, especially at the beginning, it sticks over there and then it can diffuse in the stroma. Uh, you can see exactly here, there is another, uh, another example. This is a, a tumor um, microenvironment. So there are uh, vessels in the tumor. You can see that, that they're, again, the green are the vessels and the red are the nanoparticle inject over that. And they stick to, the, to some vessel that are particularly inflamed. And then with the time, what we can monitor with the intravital microscope is how these particles basically diffuse in the stroma, which is our overarching achievement for, for example, drugs. Um, but summarize all this part of the talk is that we have a nano object that is derived from leukocyte that by nature um, target endo uh, inflame endothelia. So we have eventually something that can target a lot of inflammatory condition. This is just the summary of them. But of course, if you think about the, the inflammation, you can name a lot of uh, different kind of uh, uh, condition. In my case, I'm part of the Department of Orthopedics. So my particularly in, um, uh, interest in, is in uh, orthopedic uh, uh, musculoskeletal disorders. And uh, we published uh, recently this review that uh, actually uh, show how is it a completely unexplored for nanomedicine, this kind of uh, application? And what are they actually challenging in the uh, bone and cartilage? Because we have completely another kind of tissue that is not uh, uh, what is uh, basically um, being investigated so far. Musculoskeletal disorder are normally uh, inflammatory based. Let's think about uh, 
for instance, uh, osteoarthritis, let's think about osteoporosis. We have different players of the inflammation, but we saw that with the same strategy, we can actually target uh, different uh, site of the musculoskeletal district. Uh, what I'm gonna show you is something that we apply to osteoarthritis and uh, uh, or something applied to uh, instead um, bone cancer, specifically osteosarcoma. So for uh, post-traumatic osteoarthritis, uh, we uh, came with the same uh, thinking. So after a trauma, uh, basically what happened is there is a huge inflammation at the site of the trauma, and we want to target that and see if we can uh, uh, ca come out with the with a solution that can be inject IV, especially uh, thinking about a polytrauma condition, and these particles can arrive to the site uh, of the uh, um, of the trauma. It's particularly ch challenging in knee post-traumatic osteoarthritis because the cartilage is not a vascularized, so we don't have an avenue for the particles to arrive directly over there, but we have to exploit the inflammation that is on the membrane of the knee, which is the the synovium that actually open up and uh, start to leak as well as a, a vasculature in the tumor, for instance, and we can exploit that passive targeting and with our uh, system, we can enhance that uh, targeting. And so we see we uh, develop the model. The model is, uh, is, is, is particular um, uh, well known in the in the field is called DMM, so is the is the dissection of the medial meniscus. In this case, of course, we been particularly care about our control because since it's a surgical and we don't want that the surgery impact the uh, um, uh, the targeting of the particle. So we have a sham something that is being done without uh, impact the cartilage. We saw that actually the particles are right at the side of the knee. We developed this method to monitor live in the knee of the uh, mice with intravital microscope. And we saw the particles arrive at the side of inflamed cartilage and diffuse it. We checked this and we checked this, uh, um, as I say before, with the right control, as well as in female and male, this is particularly important and is a message that I want to I want to send with this uh, with this audience is particularly important because in different conditions, the male and uh, female, the sex variables is different. And we saw that there are some differences in the distribution and targeting if we are using male and female. In this particular case of post-traumatic osteoarthritis, even if there is a huge sex difference in the pathology at the human level, because females are way more prone to develop osteoarthritis than male, we didn't see difference in the, in the vasculature. And so we are researching a different, uh, uh, let's say, um, way to, uh, uh, to address this part. But as you can see, we had the specific targeting of these particles um, starting from the 24 hours toward the same seven days, which is the big part of the inflammation after trauma. Everyone dealing in the normal condition resolving seven days, and we saw the accumulation is basically significant difference within the seven days. So we have something that, uh, and it's, this is especially uh, directed towards uh, uh, young athletes or uh, service army people that we can inject right after the trauma and can arrive over there and modulate uh, them the uh, the space uh, in uh, whatever I describe uh, till now is uh, is and uh, I I think that you appreciate this part is a liposome formulation. So it's a formulation that uh, as a normal liposome allow us to load hydrophobic and hydrophilic uh, um, uh, molecules, but is not suitable for genetic cargo. And when I speak about genetic cargo, I speak about RNA and mRNA, sRNA, and so on and so forth. Uh, we became uh, recently part of this Center for um, mRNA Therapeutics. It is a center inside our institute and has been uh, 
uh, funded by the CIPRI, uh, which is uh, for uh, for people that don't know, is a federal agency here in Texas that has the aim to cure cancer as much as possible. So they give a lot of seeding money to create uh, this um, this center. And in this in this center, we have the different type of uh, compound that uh, we need to develop uh, mRNA therapeutics. And I'm part of uh, the nanoparticles and the, the vehicle part. And the important thing is like, can we translate this system for uh, carry genetic cargo? And this is, was the challenging, uh, uh, the big challenge that um, that we are facing. Because as I, I was saying before, we had the liposome and we have the lipid nanoparticles. I don't have to explain to you uh, how they look like, but the important thing is that when we uh, develop leucosome, we develop uh, with the aim to have the liposome that basically mimic the cell. And the, uh, the double layer of the liposome, the, uh, the, the uh, double uh, lipidic layer actually mimic the membrane uh, of the cells. So the protein, especially membrane protein, can be stabilized inside the wall of the liposome. This is not very true for lipid nanoparticles in which we don't have basically the double layer. So what's going on? We try, let's say naively, to try to understand if we can reproduce the same type of uh, uh, synthesis from uh, that uh, we were doing with the liposome, with the lipid nanoparticles, but ap apparently we were not able to do it. As you can see here, uh, what happened that, uh, of course, membrane uh, protein um, in the self-assembling of the lipid nanoparticles affect the stability of the particle themselves. And you can see from the size, because in this size, uh, uh, you can see that the size is pretty big over here. I don't, let me see the laser point. The size is pretty big over here, but then, uh, then when we do the dialysis and we filter, that you can see over here, we reduce a little bit the size, but we, with the size, we reduce also the PDI, but the long story short is that what happened is that everything clumps together and it precipitate. And when we filter, what happened is that we remove all the precipitation. We lose a lot of things, especially the in this case, what was sRNA. So a lot of, uh, uh, the um, encapsulation efficiency is lost in this particular thing. So, and it, it's, it's possible to see it exactly here because the solution is completely not transparent. So what is, is happening is that uh, throughout the macrofluidic system, the protein clumps and uh, they precipitate within uh, uh, the solution. So it was not suitable at the beginning, especially with this naive approach saying, okay, it's always worked over there. It's going to work also with LMP's name. And that it didn't work. So we, and I cannot share uh, the, um, the details because of course we are, uh, we have the patent pending right now. So I cannot enter in details, but what I can tell you is that PEG, is actually the um, our friend and enemy, but is our um, variable that we have to control as much as possible because for what we think is steric hindrance, uh, allow or uh, doesn't allow uh, the membrane protein to interact with the uh, with the particles. What we saw is actually that uh, we are. Uh, we can see that uh, both the flow rate and the PEG affect the stability of these LMPs leucosome. But at the end, we found out how to come out with the stable formulation. You can see here the, 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 um, the cryo TEM that show the, uh, the right conformation, let's say, of LMPs. Uh, we are studying, it was not an easy task, but we are studying also as much as possible to locate the membrane protein over there. We are pretty sure that we have membrane protein in the formulation because uh, we did uh, extra assays 
to prove uh, that they retain the tropism towards the inflammation, right? And uh, in this case, we use sRNA. So and in this specific experiment, the sRNA was against a STAT3 because it was an application toward cancer. And you can see that uh, basically the um, leukostat3 uh, as well as these are normal LMPs with MC3, and this is lipofactam, mean, they silence the gene uh, as expected. So uh, what, um, and actually they perform kind of better, at least in vitro of uh, LMPs in the silencing the target gene. So what, um, uh, what we are trying to do right now, that is what I try to uh, be uh, very, focus on is understanding the parameters and understanding the variability of this system, because I recognize that if we want to scale up this kind of system, uh, which is very complex because we have a source of protein as well as uh, um, a, a, an LMPs, we have to be sure that the uh, process is as much as possible reproducible. And uh, with biomimetic nanoparticles as well as the exosome is what is actually a kind of limitation of these systems that we gain of, uh, on tropism and targeting, but we lose it uh, sometimes in reproducibility. So what we are doing right now is focusing on the reproducibility a lot because we want to be sure that our formulation has always the same amount of protein embedding on it. The protein actually is pretty difficult for this size to understand where the protein are arranged in the, in the conformation of the nanoparticles. What we saw in the preliminary studies is that these particles are, uh, are actually able to uh, deliver an efficient um, mRNA and sRNA. Here I, I'm showing the sRNA. Unfortunately, I cannot show you the mRNA because I'm in the patent, so it's something uh, that eventually next time I will be able to show also in vivo the effect of this. Uh, but the important thing that I want to say is that uh, never stop at the very beginning and say, yes, I have you know, my QC, I have my size, I have my encapsulation efficiency that is around, uh, is in this case, we... Um, we went over the 85%, 90% of encapsulation efficiency, but understanding very well what is the conformation of the, uh, your particles in order to understand how much reproducible is your, uh, is your um, overall uh, uh, system. Uh, having said that, I, 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 I'm, I'm done with talking. I, I hopefully... Uh, deliver the message about how, how cool is this system, but how are the limitation of this system and where we are going to do, because what we are really want to do is uh, having this going to the uh, bad side, since that uh, we are aiming uh, towards developed therapies and we are uh, start to develop this kind of formulation in CGMP uh, in order to have all the QC under um, under uh, uh, control. Uh, I want to just thank the past collaborators that work on this platform. They are listed over here. Then uh, the collaborators all, um, that we are uh, ongoing right now, the, um, my funding agency, my, my academic collaboration. And I want just to take the chance to uh, speak about uh, my green lab. What we are doing in our, my lab is try to reduce as much as possible uh, the impact that the research uh, laboratory has on the environment. And uh, if you are interested, I will talk about how to reduce as much as possible in the field of nano nanomedicine, uh, this thing. And thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Francesca, for joining us today. And um, thank you, everyone, for joining our tea time. Uh, have a great uh, afternoon, morning, wherever you are in the world. And we'll see you <laughs> next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye, 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 Sarah. Bye. <laughs>